preparation for hearing God's word, let us pray. Faithful God, how blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Sanctify us by your word and spirit, so that we may glorify you in the company of the faithful, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 130 is our first reading this morning, and it will be sung by the Sanctuary Choir.
Our second lesson this morning comes from the letter of 1 John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. And all who have this hope in Him purify themselves just as He is pure. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Perhaps you already know, but I had to look it up. What is the meaning of the Latin word requiem? I knew that a sung requiem is a worship service for those who have died, commemorating them to God, but I did not know the exact meaning of the word. If you don't know either, it's rest, rest something all of us might long for, especially these days, something many need, and perhaps more than many of us. The rest that the word requiem speaks of isn't just a good night's sleep, like you might have gotten last night with our extra hour, but it's rest from the turmoil of the world. Ultimately, rest in God's eternal arms, peace and wholeness and holiness in God's sight. In this life, we get glimpses and sometimes moments of that kind of rest. The psalmist witnesses to a God before whom none can stand, but also to the peace we receive when trusting that God is merciful and gracious. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in God's word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. I imagine that these words of prayer resonate often with those who look to God for life. I've had my own dark nights, and maybe you have also, lying awake, mind worrying, perhaps shame-faced over bad, bad behavior in a relationship, or in fear when facing life's difficult circumstances, or in grief through an illness or helping a loved one through an illness or to face death. There are many circumstances of life that bring us teetering to the edge of hope and despair and we are not certain which way we will fall in the dark night. And it's only God's gracious presence in the quiet dawning of the light whenever it comes that moves us into trust and into rest, into remembering that with the Lord there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. All Saints Day offers unique opportunity to the church to remember these promises because it's often in the people that God gives us, the people who loved us best that we remember the promises of God. Those by whom we've been loved best, those who have been examples of faithfulness and loving discipleship, those who have helped shape us and helped us grow in faith and love. Remembering them enables us to remember who God is. All Saints Day is just that day to remember our loved ones, to remember those church members who have joined the church triumphant this past year, 
to give thanks for their lives. It's a day to remember and to give thanks for everybody that we know who has joined the church triumphant, no matter when. It's a day to remember, too, that our lives belong to God, and that we are God's beloveds, not by our own doing, but simply because God is gracious and merciful, on whom God will choose to be gracious and merciful. There was a member at Middle Spring in the congregation I served previously, who every Sunday, when leaving the church, would give me a big hug and say, until next week, Saint Kim. And he wasn't making a comment about me in particular. He was reminding me and himself, I suspect, about who we are in God's eyes because of Christ's justifying love, the love that makes us holy in God's eyes. Again, not because we've earned it or deserved it, but because in grace, and mysteriously through Christ, God, the creator of all, offers that love. And I suspect he was reminding himself as much as me because this particular member and I did not see eye to eye on many aspects of life, perhaps even most aspects and issues of the day. He did not live to see the 2016 presidential election, for instance, and I am certain we would not have voted the same way. And yet, here we were, in the same Christian fellowship, recognizing the image of God in one another, and doing our best to stay open to each other, and to God's transforming and sanctifying love. All Saints Day is a day to remember that God's love is freely given to whomever God chooses, and that we should assume with gracious hope that every person we encounter is also God's beloved and counted among the saints. The vision of John's revelation of the multitude of people from every tribe and nation and language is as true today as it will be in God's final kingdom. I also have a Friday morning prayer group. We meet on Zoom, and this past Friday, we also observed All Saints Day together. We took an opportunity to name and give thanks for individuals important to us. And it was a moving moment for me to be able to name my mother and to acknowledge her life in the communion of saints and in the context of that Christian community, and especially in remembering people who have shaped me and taught me about the life of faith and who now live eternally with God. And because no relationship is perfect, it was also an opportunity to remember that it's only by grace that any of us are able to keep company with the saints. I hope that you find today's worship just such an experience, an opportunity to remember your beloveds and your belovedness, to rest in the hope of what will be, even as we work to reveal God's transforming love in the world, living as God's saints today as best we can, signs of God's kingdom to come. Amen.
As you go out into the world, I want to bring your attention to an opportunity to serve Christian Churches United. Tomorrow, we partner with Christian Churches United to seek to serve those who experience homelessness. You can read about that in your bulletin. And remember that you are God's called and sent people. Go out into the world in peace. Reflect the love of our Savior into the world and look forward with hope to joining the great communion of saints in the church everlasting. Amen.